If you'd like online business explained to you in a way that you can actually understand, go to latenightim.com forward slash explain. It's completely free and I made it just for you. Now, how about an episode? Episode 180. Late Night Internet Mar- This week on the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast, we're going to continue our discussion about traffic. I've got a technique for you, and we're going to talk about the role of email marketing inside your traffic strategy. All this and more on the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. The Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. You've been working for somebody else. But you want a business to run yourself. You want to know how to start and where to begin. Can you get out your comfort zone, my friend? Yes, you can do it right when it's late at night. At the end of the day, your dreams burning inside. So keep it up and you will find that you're building your business one night. And now, broadcasting late at night from a little studio in the big state of Texas, your host, host, Mark Mason. Hey, 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 how is everyone doing today? I hope you are having a super fantastic day, and I hope that you followed the episode 179 and the advice therein, and you tried out subscribers.com, as we mentioned last week to get those browser notifications up and running so you can be collecting subscribers or to that browser notification service on your website. I've been surprised that the people that have been saying yes to that browser notification question, those come in at a rate that is significantly faster than my email opt-in rate. And that got me thinking that maybe there's something I need to work on with regard to my email opt-ins. We're going to talk about that a little bit today, but before we get to that, I want to talk to you a little bit about another conversation that I had on Voxer with my good friend, Dr. Ryan Gray. Now, Dr. Gray used to be a flight surgeon in the United States Air Force. Thank you for your service, Dr. Gray. But now he runs an amazing business where he helps students that are interested in getting into medical school, sort of these pre-med students, figure out how to navigate that medical school landscape. It's kind of an amazing business, and you can find him at medicalschoolhq.net, where he's got multiple podcasts and multiple shows talking all about things like the MCAT and pre-med and how to do board rounds and all this kind of stuff. So he's got all of these kind of medical school things going on. It's a huge brand for Dr. Gray, and he's been incredibly successful doing it. He wanted to weigh in on this topic of Google snippets because he's got an entirely different view about the value and risk and business case for Google snippets than what we've been talking about in the last couple of episodes. You'll recall that what we've been talking about is this kind of idea of whether or not Google's actually stealing your traffic and how it's impacting your conversions. And I'm embarrassed to admit that this is sort of a scarcity mentality that I have had on this topic. Here's what Dr. Gray had to say to kind of jerk me back into my normal mindset. The whole Google rich snippet thing, I've heard your conversation over and over again, and everything focuses around traffic and conversions and everything else. And I'll provide the, the alternative uh, outlook. We've been crushing snippets lately. I have my, my team focused on them and I get uh, Slack messages all the time. When we get a new snippet, we use Hrefs to track all that. And at the end of the day, uh, I only care about providing value with the assumption and, and the kind of proof in the pudding with how my business has grown is that the value will then turn into, uh, 
to to monetary rewards later on. So that's a alternative look. I don't care about the conversions. I don't care about uh, Google quote unquote stealing my traffic. I care about providing value to my audience and because of my niche and everything else, I know that if they find one thing, they'll be looking for more and hopefully I get in front of them and, and build that brand recognition through those snippets. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> So clearly, this is a great point of view to have, not, not just for Google traffic, but for everything that you do. And it's it's a lesson that I learned from Cliff Ravenscraft many times, uh, many a long time ago, Cliff being the mindset answer man, is what does this situation make possible, right? Something is happening. It's out of my direct control. Obviously, what Google decides to do is out of my direct control. And so the question I should be asking and that I know to ask and that I should be teaching you to ask is what is a good response to this? What does this actually make possible? And Dr. Gray nails it on the head. This makes some amazing branding possible. And it's true. If you're searching around around a topic and you constantly see that the that Google has decided that the authority is in this case medical medical school hq.net then where what is that telling you that's telling you that if you really want to know about this topic that you want to go to medical school hq.net for more information you want to go find their podcast those are the guys that you want to trust because those are the guys that Google trusts. Okay, super obvious. Thanks to Dr. Gray for that insight. I think that's really a really good point, not just about Google traffic, but about the way you should be approaching your internet business each and every day. When life gives you lemons, brother, you got to go make some lemonade. It's time to get to work. One night at a time. One night at a time. Okay, so we've been talking a lot about traffic lately. We've been talking about Google traffic. We've been talking about traffic that you can generate from these web browser notifications. And I promise you I'm running an experiment with that. I haven't quite finished yet, but I'll let you know about my experience with the web browser notifications probably next week. But I wanted to, I had one more traffic topic that I wanted to talk to you about, and that was capturing email addresses. Now, you, you know, email marketing, what does that have to do with traffic? I think a big part of your email marketing strategy typically needs to be creating amazing content on your blog or your website or your e-commerce site or whatever kind of presence that you have on the web that you own, and then sending out emails to remind people to click through and go visit that content. That has a couple of positive benefits. When you click through to, when, when you send an email to your prospect and ask, ask them to click through to something, that teaches them that it's okay to click on your emails and it improves your deliverability and response rates. You got people opening your emails, clicking on them, taking action. All of that is good for the health of your email marketing campaign. And one thing that you can do is deliver amazing content, deliver value to your customers. That's something that we always talk about. It's something that Dr. Gray was just reminding me about, which is still a little embarrassing. And you know, you're creating value and you're just letting your customer know, hey, here's another incredibly e valuable email from Mark where he's gonna deliver me some content. And you're gonna drive that traffic back to your site. Now that can have some side effects. Maybe while they're on your site, they'll see a banner ad or take some other action that you want. But the main thing is that you're delivering value back to the customer. So your email strategy is an important part of your traffic strategy. Your weekly newsletter or whatever you're sending out should be on occasion or maybe even most of the time delivering readers back to your blog. And the thing to understand is, in general, it's much less expensive and much more efficient to get a, a reader back than it is to get them the first time. So that's sort of an important idea. It's underneath this web push notification idea. It's, it's an idea underneath driving traffic with email marketing is that 
it is cheaper to acquire a visitor that's a repeat visitor than it is to require a visitor for the first time. If you're acquiring them for the first time, likely you're do, acquiring them with ads or you're spending a lot of money building organic traffic or something like that. There's some cost associated with that. But once you've got them, it's pretty cheap to keep them if you'll work on that a little bit. So the question becomes then, well, how can we get more of those guys and gals on our email list? How can we do that? And one thing that I have never done before that I have recently been experimenting with is exit intent pop-ups. Now, these are the somewhat annoying, in some cases, pop-ups that come up whenever your mouse, whenever you're on a site and your mouse goes to towards the back button or towards the address bar, they pop up because that is a message to the, the software that, hey, this guy's about to leave the site entirely. I'm going to make a last ditch attempt to capture this subscriber. And so, you know, I've never used these. And I think like the web browser pop-ups, I think I haven't used them because I've oftentimes find them a, a bit annoying. I, I don't love them because I've already decided I want to leave and that interrupts my behavior as a user. And so I, you know, I have not used those. And I think my internal resistance to these is that I don't particularly love them as a person who visits sites. Now, there's some things you can do to mitigate that. With most of these tools, you can set cookies so that that only happens one time to a person, for example. So if you're worried about annoying your visitors, you can turn that annoyance down by, for example, setting an amount of time that they will see the next exit pop-up. So they see an exit pop-up once, and then you can say, don't show this visitor another exit pop-up for another 60 days. So that's done by cookies. So I decided, again, at the urging of Neil Patel to test this, and I'm running this test as well on the blog over at latenightim.com. You can see that running over there. And there are multiple tools for doing this. Um, some very popular ones. Probably the most popular and familiar one is Optin Monster. Optin Monster is a very famous tool. A lot of people use it, and you're probably well familiar with it. It is a tool that specializes in the conversion of website visitors into subscribers. There's another tool that's similar called Growth Funnel that's pretty popular. Some people use things that are built into their theme. So for example, if you use the Thrive theme on your website, you can use Thrive Leads and Thrive Leads can produce this exit pop-up. I don't use Thrive. As many of you know, I use Divi. And by the way, I love that theme from Elegant Themes. I've used it for years and years. I use it on all my websites and you can find that at latenightim.com forward slash Divi, D-I-V-I. And if you want to support the show by buying a subscription to Divi, that would be awesome. Um, but that is my recommendation for how to build websites. Unfortunately, the plugin, the email plugin that comes with Divi does not support exit pop-ups. But there is a plugin that does. It's called Divi Life. And you can find that at latenightim.com forward slash Divi Life, D-I-V-I Life. And you can easily plug that in. And it uses the beautiful, elegant themes, Divi website builder. And you can build these pages and make them look like whatever you want. It's really cool. So with that plugin, I'm able to create that within the framework that I use, which is Divi. And I think if, if you use a website framework like Thrive or Divi or Genesis or something like that, quite likely you'll be able to find a framework um, that works for you. There are other ones like OmniConvert and Ninja. Um, so there's lots of tools out there that you can use to you to create an exit intent pop-up for your website. So once you do this, what happens is you have a full page sheet that pops up whenever someone tries to exit your website. And the question is, what do you want to say on that? I mean, your intent is to something like, hey, please don't go. I don't want you to leave, right? But but you need to do better than that. You need to make a compelling offer on the pop-up that will cause them to usually 
opt in or take some other action that you're wanting them to take before they go. And I think there's two kinds of things to consider here. If you have an e-commerce site, your goal with the exit pop-up might be to get them to take a purchasing action before they leave. If you're trying to sell something, you might want to do something to entice someone to make a purchase right there on that page. Before you go, here's a one-time coupon, coupon code for 20% off valid for today only. Or before you go, here's a special offer that expires in 30 minutes and have a countdown timer, that sort of thing. So those are the kinds of things you want to be thinking about. Maybe today only a special bundle offer, buy one, get one free if that's appropriate for what you're doing on your website. Something on the exit pop-up that's uniquely presented to the visitor. These are kind of nice because it means that you can run a sale but you can get full price from people that aren't leaving the site and you can reserve the lower margin sale price for someone who was going to leave anyway. So that's just money that was going to leave the site. Instead, you convert it to a lower margin offer that can work really, really well. Now, there's some tricks you can do to make these work better. And if you're not on an e-commerce site, you might want to just simply have the goal of capturing that person's email before they leave. I think the best way to do that in general is with a lead magnet. So you want to offer a free course, a free download, a checklist, the same kind of normal lead magnets that you would be offering uh, anyway. You might want to do something lighter weight like, uh, uh, you know, free tips. Usually I would try to do something more than just, hey, join my newsletter before you go. I'd want to offer them some kind of downloadable, can't live without incredibly valuable content on on exit. So basically what you're saying is, hey, before you go, I have this one last thing I want you to consider. That's sort of the intent of the exit pop-up. So how can you make these convert better? Well, if you've got sophisticated ability on your website where you know where things are coming from, and some of these two, some of these tools do this automatically, you can make the pop-up specific to the visitor's name or somehow by using their, uh, you know, where they came from. So for example, if you know where the traffic is com coming from, let's say you know that it's coming from a particular Facebook ad, there's technology available where you could reference the fact that they came from Facebook if that were appropriate. Or even better, if you've got some kind of flow where on the front end you've captured their name, or let's say you've previously captured their name as an opt-in, and now you're wanting to make them an offer on the on exit. If that's stored in the cookie properly, then you might be able to have an exit intent pop up that's name specific. Those are really cool. That's a pretty sophisticated thing to do. And that's not going to be for everybody. I think what what regular people like you and me are going to want to do or things like content upgrades where you offer some kind of bonus or maybe if your goal is just to keep them on site, you could offer re related posts because you can set these exit intent pages on uh, these exit intent pop-ups rather on particular pages. So you already know in many cases exactly what the reader is looking for or what they were reading. Maybe you've got three other articles that, that most people that like that article, kind of a related posts idea that they should be checking out before they leave. The other thing that you can do is you can do things like make the exit intent pop up very beautiful. If you're offering a download, maybe you want to have something that looks like an infographic or a picture of the download that makes it even more enticing. Or maybe if it's a sales kind of situation and you're putting an exit intent pop up there, maybe you know what your buyer's primary objection is, and maybe you can handle that objection right there on the page. So you know that most people bounce because the price is too high. Maybe you want to handle that price objection right there in the exit intent pop-up. So those are some ideas. Of course, with e-commerce, you can offer discounts and free shipping. You can do something to create scarcity and urgency, you can offer all kinds of things like a free product with shipping or a free trial or show other popular products. There's all kinds of things 
you can imagine that you could do on exit. Now you can also kind of do a little pivot. So maybe you could offer a quiz. So, you know, like uh, Ducker has this quiz where he says, you know, what kind of entrepreneur are you? And he kind of tries to understand what your business situation is. Amy Porterfield is doing that right now as well with her as a lead up to her course launch for courses that convert. You can offer that quiz on exit before you go take our free quiz. It'll tell you exactly what kind of course that you need to create. And you can put that in your exit intent. The other thing you can do is you can do something that interrupts behavior, make it shocking, a shocking image. I would stay away from stuff that's shocking and offensive, but an unexpected, let's use that word, an unexpected image or um, something that makes someone laugh or stop words like the word wait or stop or caution or something like that. The other thing I see a lot that works well in exit intent is imagine the entire page is taken over asking them a question. Do you want more traffic? Yes or no. Do you want a better golf swing? Yes or no. M most people are going to click yes. And then you can direct them back into your site to call to a, an article called, um, get a better golf swing for the people that select no, you could make it kind of funny. No, really? Your golf swing is that good? You really don't want a better golf swing? You know, maybe maybe I could take lessons from you. You know, maybe you decide to take it in a funny direction if you use that. You can also put social proof or animation or those sort of things uh, on the exit page. In fact, that exit pop-up, the way it works in the in the Divi Builder that I use, you can do anything on that that you do on a regular page. So you can have animation and the normal sorts of things that you would do on a modern website, you can do. And of course, as always, you want to use all of your best copywriting techniques that you know on this exit intent pop-up. So that's my recommendation to you. That's the other experiment that I'm running at Late Night Internet Marketing, if you go over there right now to latenightim.com and then you try to exit the site, you will see the somewhat annoying exit pop-up if you've not seen it before. And what I'm offering is my free how to get started with internet business video course that I have available. And that's really great because, you know, if you think about it from the perspective of Late Night Internet Marketing, People are finding me through search. Generally, those are people who are trying to figure out how to make money online. The vast preponderance of those searchers and people that arrive at my site are really just trying to get started. They're confused and they're really not sure how to get started. They've been listening to podcasts and reading 50,000 different things and they're just feeling overwhelmed. And that video course is designed to completely demystify them so that they can get on to the next step. It's completely free. And I offer that right in the exit intent pop-up. And this is just a test. You can take a look at it. It's not particularly beautiful, but that's exactly what I'm trying to accomplish there. And if the test looks good, then I'll tune it up and I'll make it look nicer and I'll work on the conversion. All of that stuff, of course, being tracked inside of Google Analytics. So I know exactly what's going on there. So that's what's going on on late night internet marketing, exit intent pop-ups. I will tell you that just by installing that, I've seen a, a measurable, and I'm not, I'm gonna stay off the word dramatic, but it feels like dramatic increase in the number of signups for that course that I just mentioned, the free course that I offer. And so uh, that's really cool. So I'll be reporting those results to you at well as well, probably when I report the subscribers.com results next week. And so we can talk about that and how that's working. But that's another thing that you can consider is this exit intent pop-up. And again, I want to emphasize the fact that you really never know whether or not these things are going to work until you test them. So unless you're testing, then you, you, know, you really don't know. You, you can hear me talk about it. And maybe it works for me and it won't work for you, but maybe it sort of works for me and it crushes for you. And the only way that you're going to know whether or not these things crush is to actually test them. And so that's my recommendation for you. Exit intent pop-ups. Now it's your turn. What action are you going to take to build your business? One night at a time.
All right, all right. So actions and takeaways from this week in late night internet marketing. One thing is make sure you you haven't got stinking thinking, as Zig Ziglar would say, creeping into your thought process. If you start down this path of scarcity mentality, like we were talking about, you're going to miss the opportunity to ask the question, what does this make possible? The example that we had this week was from Dr. Gray, he, where he tells us, look, man, this is a branding opportunity for my brand, dummy. He didn't actually call me dummy, but if he did, it wouldn't have hurt my feelings. But this is the kind of thing that I preach all the time, and it's like a physician heal thyself there. See what I did there? Dr. Gray is a physician. Anyway, you got to pay attention because even those of us who are trying to pay attention to this stuff, we missed we miss the forest for the trees sometime. That's number one. So I want you to analyze your own thinking this week. Think about the places where you're coming at something from a scarcity mentality, from a lack of abundance, and see what it takes to get around to a more positive, more abundance-minded way of thinking. I think that's a really important takeaway from today's episode. Number two, I want you to try exit intent pop-ups. Go and research those. Look at Optin Monster, a couple of these other things. You can Google exit intent pop-up tools. There are several of them. You can pick one. Some of them have free trials if you don't want to spend any money and just throw one up there and see what happens to your opt-in rate and see if that's good for you and your business. Those are your actions for this week. Until next week, I hope you crush it. I hope everything is awesome for you and I hope you have an amazing, fantastic week. Ciao. You can do it right when it's late at night. You've been listening to the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. Be sure to visit latenightpodcast.com today to leave feedback for Mark. Download special bonus content, access the show notes, and more. See you there. Until then. Until then, go and make some great progress on your internet business. One night at a time. One night at a time. So I had this experience in the last 24 hours that I want to share with you is craziness and maybe it'll inform how you do things in your own business. So I went outside last night. My kids were helping us clean up the garage. Our garage is actually on the front of our house. And so my wife has rules for that because it's in Dallas most garages are on the back of the house and there's an alleyway and you never see it. And so the garage can look like a bomb went off and no one ever knows. But it happens that in our particular situation, we have a front entry driveway, which is unusual, a little bit unusual in Dallas, not unheard of, but a little bit unusual. And so people who are coming to visit us when they drive in our driveway, they're in front of our garage and if the garage door is open, they see whatever mess is in there. So when we moved here, we made a big deal of getting, I have a super nice workbench out there. We have, you know, cabinets for everything. And we've got a garage floor coating like you would find in an aircraft hangar. And it, it looks really nice. And so the problem though, is we have to keep it looking really nice. And this is one of the things that's important to my wife. It's important to me too, but it's really important to my OCD wife who likes everything in exactly the right place. So we're out there cleaning the garage as we often do. And we had the kids out there getting rid of some junk and the kids were horsing around and they were playing with the garage door, which I knew had been acting up and I knew I was going to have to call the garage door guy. So the garage door was halfway down. They reversed the door and the spring broke. And I, it's not their fault. The garage door needed maintenance. I knew that. And so the spring broke. The door, you know, came crashing to the ground. And then, of course, it wouldn't go up anymore. My wife's Jeep was trapped inside, so I had to deal with that. And, you know, of course, the, the top was off the Jeep, so I had to put the top back on the Jeep because it was going to have to sit out overnight. So we got all that straightened up. And by the time I got in and got everything sorted out. It was 10 o'clock at night. So I called the overhead garage door company that's in my area. They're actually in the town next door. 
uh, uh, the town one town over, and they're very popular and um, they have an amazing reputation. I've used them for years and I called them up and I said, Hey, my garage door's broken. Of course, there was no one there. I got voicemail and I said, you know, I know it's short notice, but if there's some way that you could come fix this for me, that would be great. It wasn't an emergency. I had gotten my wife's Jeep out. We can go a couple of days without being able to open the garage door, but we use our garage door every day, multiple times a day. We really wanted it fixed. So amazingly, at 7.30 in the morning, I get this call from the garage door people. Now, this is a big company, right? I mean, they service the entire Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Plano Overhead Garage Door. This is an amazing company. 7.30 in the morning, the lady calls me. First thing she does is apologize for calling so early. Want to make sure I was really awake. Of course, I get up at 5 and I'm at my desk by 6 something. So I was awake and happy to hear from them. And she said she understood the situation and that she could have a technician at my house by 10 a.m. Of course, I was thrilled because I'm going to be able to get my garage door fixed today. I moved my schedule around at work. I mentioned to my boss, hey, I need to go down and uh, take care of this. No problem. So I'm working from the house. 10 a.m., the garage door guy sh shows up. And actually, right before that, right before he showed up, about 20 minutes before, I get a text from the company that says, hey, your garage door guy named Ryan, he's on the way. And here's a picture of Ryan, okay, in the text message. And by the way, Ryan, I can't remember exactly what it said. It said, Ryan likes the Dallas Cowboys and barbecue or something like that. I, it's, it was the most amazing pre-arrival announcement for a, a service person I'd ever seen in my life. And it really struck me to know that they were including the details of the fact that he liked barbecue. I remember that for sure. So sure enough, Ryan gets here. He's in a nice truck, a nice company truck, nice, not beat up, you know, wrecked three times. Nice, looks, presents really well, walks up, introduces himself, asks me what the problem is, tells me exactly what's going on, has a computerized ability to generate a quote for me, tells me exactly how much it's going to be, 300 and something dollars, by the way, ouch. And, but then explains to me that, not only am I going to get my garage door fixed today, but that he's going to inspect my other garage door for free and tune it up. He took care of that. And the repairs that he does today, they use super heavy duty springs and their work carries a lifetime warranty on the springs. If anything ever happens, they'll take care of it. That's awesome. What an awesome experience. So this guy takes care of this thing. He's super fast. Then we discussed all about home automation because I'm kind of a home automation geek. I mean, I am an electrical engineer after all. And he tells me all about the cool garage door, new garage door openers they have and how they interface with home automation and how now they interface with Amazon. So you can make it possible for Amazon to open your garage door and put the packages inside your garage if you would like to do that so that they're no longer sitting on the porch and all this kind of stuff. Then we get into this discussion about how my wife really wants to replace the tan metal garage doors that we have with brown faux wooden garage doors that match the shutters on the front of the house. Because again, the garage doors are on the front of the house and she's she's got an eye for these sort of details and how to make things look great. And she knows that that's the right design choice for the front of our house. So we talk about that and what that might cost. And the fact that insulin and, you know, how many degrees of temperature change I could expect if I went with insulated garage doors. I mean, this guy knew everything. This guy, Ryan, has forgotten more about garage doors than I will ever know in my entire life. And I'm an engineer. I care about things like garage doors. This guy was amazing. So he fixes everything up. And I'm, I'm not kidding you. Complete rebuild of the garage doors, new springs, and everything. I think it took him a total of 45 minutes, including the conversation. Total over delivery, right? The guy's totally got me over a barrel. I've got to get my garage door fixed. He could be crappy or awesome, and I still need my garage door fix. He was awesome. So here's my question for you Are you crappy or are you awesome? Are you doing stuff that, like Ryan, where people are so delighted by interacting with you that they can't wait to talk to you again. 
are you doing stuff in your business that makes people do what I'm doing right now and talk about you on their podcast? Are you doing that? Because if you're not, I'm going to encourage you to do that because that's what Ryan does. And let me tell you what, Ryan is the bomb. Yeah, that's right. The bomb. <laughs> Late night internet marketing. Hey, it's Mark again. I wanted to tell you one more time about this absolutely free resource that I have for helping people who are trying to get the big picture for internet marketing actually get started and understand what all their choices are. If that's not you, there's no more content. You can skip to the end. But if you're someone who came to this podcast because you're searching for how to get started online and you just can't cut through all the noise, I get it. That was me in 2007, when I was trying to get started, there were so many people throwing offers at me that I really couldn't even understand what all the different business models were. I couldn't understand how money moved around on the internet. And I couldn't really get a grip on what direction I wanted to go in so I could figure out how to move forward. I've created a free video resource for you just for that purpose at latenightim.com forward slash explain. In several short videos, I just explained to you what internet marketing is all about and what online business is all about and the different options that you have for starting an online business. There's nothing to buy there. You just sign up for access and you get the videos just like that. So if that's interesting to you or if you know someone who's in the same situation, send them that link, latenightim.com forward slash explain. And let me know what you think. I'd love to hear what people are thinking that are in the exact same position that I was in more than a decade ago in 2007. In some ways, it seems like yesterday. And in some ways, it seems like an entire lifetime ago. Again, that's latenightim.com forward slash explain. Late night 